Oh, very cool. Oh, very interesting. Yeah. Well, uh, so so we are at the top of the hour, and uh, I suspect people will be uh, joining very shortly, and and we'll grow out the list. Uh, but I do want to get started because we do have a full hour sort of queued up here. Um, uh, as we do always, uh, first and foremost, I, I do want to remind everyone that uh, we are recording this, uh, and uh, as always, we have our Linux Foundation antitrust policy that we want to be mindful of, and so I'll switch over to that. Uh, and for those of you, it looks like everybody is on on video, so we sh should should be good to go. Um, so what you should see on the screen is our antitrust policy. Uh, if you were to read through that, what that effectively means that uh, you just want to be a good person. Uh, and of course, there's a URL on there. If you want to read details of the antitrust policy, feel free to do so. Uh, and thanks for being mindful of that, uh, always. Um, uh, and, and as a reminder, uh, Hyperledger, as is the case with the Linux Foundation, is both open source and open community. So uh, please uh, think in terms of uh, being aware not to share any kind of IP, because uh, again, as I mentioned, this is a recorded event in the public space. Okay, um, so I, I see a couple of uh, names on, on the, uh, the call list uh, that, that don't look particularly familiar, and uh, I see someone by the name of Swish Star, Swish Star, <laughs> uh, would you like to introduce yourself? Uh, sure, I will. Uh, actually, this is Steve Wish Star. Um, oh, I see. And, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and yes, I will. Uh, I thought I had uh, converted my name over to you know human readable as a, as opposed to uh, username, so I will okay. do that. Um, but yeah, uh, I am new. Um, I'm the CTO uh, for a new startup called MedJane, um, and we're working on the interoperability issues with healthcare. So we're approaching the EHR realm uh, with a blockchain solution. Oh, outstanding. And uh, where, where are you located? Where is MedChain located? Uh, MedChain is actually located in uh, Denver, Colorado. Uh, I happen to be located in Alaska. Uh, I'm up here uh, working remotely. Oh, uh, southeast or Anchorage area or whereabouts? Yeah, southeast. Um, I'm actually in Haines, Alaska, uh, just north of Juneau. Oh, uh, I, I know Haines, Haines Junction pretty well. So, oh, very cool. Yes, Amaz awesome place. Uh, uh, amazing that technology can can get you anywhere these days. That, that's very very cool. Uh, I am. Yep, I am amazed too. Well, so we have a couple of folks on the call from the Denver area, and so uh, Wendy, you want to introduce yourself because uh, you may have a, a a colleague very nearby. Yay! Um, I am happy to meet more people from Denver. I'm I'm Wendy Charles. I work at Denver Health and uh, very active in the Denver blockchain community. So um, I sounds like I need to learn more about your company, Steve. Sounds great. Outstanding. Uh, and and Steve, uh, as far as MedChain goes, where specifically are you focusing your efforts? Um, yeah, basically. Um being able to transfer uh, medical records uh, between uh, patients and uh, providers and uh, different uh, area, different providers. Oh, outstanding. And are you planning to use uh, Hyperledger, uh, Fabric perhaps, or Sawtooth? Fabric, yep. Oh, outstanding. Oh, very good. Great, great to know. Uh, and do you have a technical background or what's your background? Yeah, my background is uh, programming. So yes, I have the, uh, the technical side. Um, uh, Joachim Sangard is our CEO, and he's doing the, the business side. Oh, outstanding. Uh, and, and the reason why I'm giving you the 20 questions here is I'm always interested to hear uh, about co new companies that are getting together that, that focus on blockchain technologies. Uh, we'd love to find a way to feature uh, you guys going forward when you're sort of uh, established and you feel comfortable to, to share a little bit about what you do. That sounds great. Well, thanks. Thanks for being on the call. Appreciate it very much. You bet. Hi, Steve. It, hi, Steve. It's Erica. I just wanted hi. to say hi. Hi, Erica. How's it going? Good. How are you? <laughs> Not too bad. Yeah, Eric and I, Erica and I have uh, actually never met here yet, but uh, we've uh, definitely talked a few times. Yeah, I'd love to hear how you guys are doing. All right. Sounds great. Okay. Excellent. Outstanding. Uh, alrighty. Well, so if there's anyone else, I think that's everybody on the call that looks, uh, and we've got pretty much uh, every everyone, everyone else I see uh, looks awfully familiar to me. Uh, and I suspect we'll get more folks joining the call a little bit late. Um, but uh, so let's move forward to uh, into community announcements. 
Um, so we do have qu quite a number of things happening here. Uh, we've got the Global Blockchain Summit that's happening. Oh, and I, I forgot to mention, uh, particularly for Steve uh, or anyone new that maybe hasn't had the opportunity to do so, we do have a membership directory that I encourage you to participate in. Uh, really what it is is opportunity to sort of post your contact information uh, in sort of a, sort of a semi-secure way. Uh, for anyone that has an interest in sort of uh, connecting with other members of the community here. Uh, and so um, I always fail to, to, to notify folks of this, especially newer folks. And so feel, please feel free to, to, to go ahead and edit this. Uh, if you have your Linux Foundation ID, this gives the opportunity to edit the wiki directly. Uh, if you have any problems, feel free to contact me uh, regarding, uh, 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 you know, editing this for the sake of getting your name and contact information up there. Okay, uh, sounds great. And uh, so I, I do wanna get into community announcements. Uh, we do have the Gl Global Blockchain Summit that's happening. Uh, that's happening on October 3rd and 4th, and that's uh, happening in uh, Westminster, Colorado. We were just talking about Denver. Uh, and in fact, uh, I believe we've got Wendy Charles, uh, who's our, uh, our vice chair. Uh, she'll be speaking at the conference. Uh, Wendy, you want to talk a little bit about the, the uh, GBS? Sure. Um, the Global Blockchain Summit is a gathering of um, to talk about all types of blockchain applications. It's not just healthcare, and there's only a few healthcare panels. And Erica, who's currently on our call, will be a panel moderator. So um, this conference uh, brings in, they brought in speakers from around the world. Um, it's very educational, it's fantastic for networking. So I would encourage those who are considering it to come on over to Denver, it's a beautiful time of year, it's a reasonably priced conference and um, it's, it's really a great value, great experience. Excellent, great. Uh, Erica, did you wanna add anything more to that? I was just going to say, if you are interested in going, um, we can give you a code for a discount. Oh, fantastic. Okay. Uh, so <laughs> everyone contact Erica quickly. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Very good. Thank you. Uh, and as well, we have the Blockchain uh, Health Summit happening. Uh, that's uh, sort of mid-month in uh, New York City. Uh, and that is located here. Uh, and I personally don't know anyone that's that's attending this. Uh, well, actually, no. I, I well, I do know uh, Heather and David, uh, but I don't don't know anyone from from the HC Sig directly uh, who's attending this. If you are attending, please let me know because it'd be great if we can get uh, some sort of notes back from you uh, if you do attend this. Hey, um, Rich, this is Ravish. Um, Hi, Ravish. Yeah. How are you doing? Uh, I might be attending it, uh, um, but I'll let you know once I finalize the schedule. Sure, excellent, that would be great. Yeah, thank you, Ravish. Hey, Rich, this is Erica. I might be attending it on behalf of IBM. I'm not sure yet. Oh, fantastic. You know. yeah. Oh, excellent, okay, yeah, definitely. Uh, please let me know, and if you do attend, like I said, uh, and if you're taking you know, uh, notes, uh, please just consider that membership would, would love to sort of uh, uh, you know, read your notes when you bring them back uh, to the group here, just so that those of us that can't attend maybe would consider attending if you know, we saw a value in it going forward or uh, we could make room for it or make a good pitch to management and so forth to make that happen. Thank you. Hey, hey Rich, um, this is Wendy. Uh, Mike McCoy will be attending that particular conference. Um, Mike, is there anything you can share about it? Yeah, yes. So uh, I actually went there last year and I ran a workshop. It was more of a, like a, an Ethereum introduction workshop. Uh, and it was actually hosted in DC last August. Now they have it in New York and it's um, a little bit more enterprise oriented specifically. And it's a really good event. It brings a lot of people from the regulatory space as well as from the professional space, kind of like where I work and stuff. Uh, and so a lot of our clients are going as well as I'm speaking on about um, the, um, about ProCredX, the credentialing uh, consortium we've partnered with, ha with Hash Health and a number of other, um, you know, blockchain governing bodies and whatnot. So uh, I'll be speaking on that and potentially running a workshop there as well. So it's a really good conference. I, I highly, um, I highly encourage anyone that especially is in the Northeast region to attend and uh, and yeah, Melissa and, and the team at GSMI run a really good show. So that's all I have. 
Excellent. Outstanding. Okay. Well, thank you for that. I appreciate it. And uh, yeah, if we can collect any kind of notes and bring them back to the to, to membership, that would be ph phenomenal. Thank you so much. Okay. And of course, uh, probably uh, most uh, significant is the uh, the Converge to Accelerate conference that's happening in Boston uh, mid-month. Uh, and of course, uh, I'm going to hold on that because this is going to uh, be a great segue into introducing our guest, uh, Tori uh, Senai. Uh, and she'll, I'm sure, be talking about not only the Converge to Accelerate conference, but as well the blockchain in healthcare uh, today uh, publication that she's been uh, uh, really the founder and publisher of. And so it continues to, to grow and, and uh, it just continues to get larger and larger and more significant. So uh, I'm going to uh, make her our host. And I'm going to hand that over to Tori. And uh, Tori, welcome. And uh, and the audience is yours. Thanks so very very much. <clears throat> Let uh, let's get the presentation up first. Or do you want to? Maybe it'd be easier just to put the PDF up in that case, and we can run through. Uh, sure. I'll, I'll well I'll bring it up. I uh, and let's see if we can get uh, get it stood up. And uh, I'm going to make a, a presentation. Can everyone see that OK? Yeah, yep. it looks great. Yes. OK. Uh, so Tori, if you want, I'll, uh, just let me know when, when you want me to advance, and I'll, I'll okay. do the work from here. Perfect. That's great. Thank you so, so very much. A sincere and humble thank you to the Hyperledger Healthcare Special Interest Group, the HCC group. Richard Block, most definitely. Wendy, you're on the call. Thank you. Brian Bellendorf also suggested uh, that uh, we we uh, we do this. We have this chat. And actually, a special thanks um, to Robert Coley, who reached out to me, one of your members, after receiving an email for a systematic review that we published uh, that went out, I think, uh, around July 4th. And the title of that was The Truth About Blockchain for Healthcare in the USA. And that's what we endeavor to do with the peer review journal, Blockchain in Healthcare Today, Build Trust Through Truth. It's the tagline not only for the journal, but for the entire portfolio. So we can go to the next one. And is that, are you and seeing that? Okay? Next one, yeah, that one's not ours. Uh oh. <laughs> well, I must be, I must be going through something then. Oh boy, let's see what we got here. Here, I'm gonna have to move a little bit around. Can we get to it that way? No. Oh boy. Oh, here we'll we'll go this way then. All right. Oh, there we are. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. So uh, this, a bunch of copy on, uh, on this slide, and you can take your time and read through it. I want to highlight four points very quickly. When we launched the journal, uh, and that was in March of 2018, I published a publisher's note, and this is an excerpt from it. And uh, the first point I want to highlight is that the purpose of the journal is to assist the accumulation and acceleration of validated successes using the technology. The second is that we chose to launch a traditional scholarly peer review journal anticipating the unfamiliar territory of, um, of the technology and, and to build familiarity and confidence with the technology, particularly in the healthcare sector. The third is that uh, the journal endeavors, and this is uh, true, I think, of any academic journal, um, to be impartial, objective, collegiate in essence, and the fourth is our editorial board members reflect um, certainly expertise, integrity, passion, commitment, willingness to contribute, uh, certainly worth ethic and ingenuity. And when we launched, um, and this is again last year in March, um, what we wanted to provide was a safe and globally accepted platform for presenting research in blockchain. And we launched at the hype of hype 
um, when hype was driving the marketplace. And what we wanted to bring was credibility and validation to it in healthcare. And uh, the, the rest, you can take your time to read. I think, Richard, uh, you put this uh, up on the site, yes? Correct, yeah, it's up uh, yeah. right in the agenda there. And so anyone has opportunity to download it and read as needed. Absolutely, so uh, I guess we wanna move down to the next slide, yeah. So what we are is the first international peer review journal dedicated to blockchain and converging technologies in healthcare. And uh, the numbers keep changing, but this is a very good thing because they keep going up. Uh, so at present, we're, we're uh, at about 27,000 downloads, uh, likely over 50 citations now, and readership in uh, over 70 countries. The journal publishes theoretical and experiential knowledge to share evidence-based research to build new solutions for healthcare around the globe. And we operate on a no-deadline, continuous basis um, with an internationally renowned peer review board that rigorously vets and evaluates original manuscripts. And so there is no uh, continuous meaning you can submit a manuscript or an editorial opinion piece, what have you, um, whenever you like. And as we, uh, uh, we get submissions, they are uh, sent into peer review. And as they are accepted, they are published. So there's no schedule but for when a submission comes in. And uh, reviews are double blind. So that means that the authors don't know who is reviewing their papers, and the peer reviewers don't know whose papers um, they are reviewing. So it works both ways. They're, it's double blind. Um, so we can go to the next slide. The journal's leadership includes um, our editor-in-chief, John Holomka, and he is the first international innovation professor at Harvard Medical School. Um, our editorial board represents five countries, Greece, uh, the United Kingdom, Netherlands, Croatia, and of course, the uh, United States. And uh, that includes government, academia, and now enterprise. And when we first launched the journal, uh, there were no commercially employed editorial board members. Um, the market landscape, however, has changed since. And we do in fact now welcome nominations from all sides as um, many, many brilliant minds. why you'd like to join and what you believe you could contribute to the journal. Um, and as I said, again, all are welcome. And the next slide now. Richard, do we want to move down again? Oh, we want me to go down one more? Yeah. Okay. Next slide. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. And the next slide is submission categories. Oh, you want to, let's see. Did we miss one? Oh, yeah. here we go. There we go. Yeah. It's, it follows this one. Oh, are you not seeing anything? No. Uh-oh. Oh, it's, oh, uh -oh we, may have, we may be having a technical problem. Is anyone else seeing <laughs> uh, the slides? So I, I'm showing submission categories. Nope. Yeah, still seeing no. the editorial board, Richard. Uh-oh, we, we have an issue here then. It appears. <laughs> uh, let me see if I can refresh my share. Oh, there we are. No, it's oh. up now. You're there oh. now. Yeah. Okay. Oh, we had, yeah, yeah, we had a bit of a glitch. I'm sorry. Oh, uh, this is this is typical. Um, so submission categories, very simply, uh, proof of concept, use cases, 
uh, special reports, and we're looking at consensus statements, guidelines, or recommendations, and we're seeing some of that now, and we certainly welcome those to the journal. Uh, methodologies, production, deployment, and uh, scale now we're also seeing, and we welcome scale. Um, original clinical research, original market research, uh, narratives, systematic reviews, meta-analysis, uh, landscape analysis, deeper dives into subsets of data, um, certainly opinions, uh, perspectives, commentary, but these all must be evidence-based and referenced. And the last on the list is training tools and kits. Um, and we should also note, when we emphasize original, um, there, we do a plagiarism check when papers first come in, and if they don't pass, we send them back to the author with suggestions. Um, so the, the original, the emphasis on original really is very, very um, important, so just keep that in mind. Um, next slide in that case, article titles, yeah, okay, it's working. Um, we have published two editions to date, three if you count the uh, podcast issue from the annual conference last year. But in 2018, for example, um, some of the uh, focus areas were supply chain, ethics, data sharing, smart contracts. Uh, again, we had our podcast edition. This year, we've published a bit on electronic health records, implementation, again, supply chain, and uh, medication histories, and we are planning special issues, and that appears in a couple of slides, uh, and we're also looking at interoperability. If anyone is interested, um, more information is contained on the journal's aims and scope for editorial focuses. Um, you will find a much more detailed uh, list there. And if you have any questions, you can always reach out to me. The next slide, Richard. Are you seeing it? Not yet. Oh. Maybe it's taking a little time to load. Um, this one's BHTY features, which Cor you probably have on your screen. Yeah, correct. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, boy, we seem to be having an issue for some reason. I'm gonna pause our share and I'm gonna restart our share. Well, Mike just had a comment. He'd love to write. Um, and Mike, you are more than welcome to. <laughs> so one of the reasons we're, uh, we're opening this up to, uh, to membership there. Awesome. Sounds good. I'd love to keep in touch. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, the last slide actually has my contact info, but I'm on LinkedIn and you can reach us through the journal and there are several ways to, um, to connect with us. So um, let's definitely stay in touch. So I see this slide up now, the BHTY features. Um, this slide really speaks to um, our partners and, and collaborators. Uh, and there are more, but I wanted to highlight these two because Artifacts is the uh, creator of the world's first blockchain platform for scholarly research and scholarly publishing. And um, this is to improve speed, collaboration, access, transparency, and attribution in scholarly research. Um, the other partner is uh, Code Ocean. And um, we offers actually, when you submit a manuscript, can include any relevant um, software code and data and submit it with the paper for the peer review process. And this, is, um, this really is important um, more so for uh, data reproducibility um, when we're looking at the journal. And these two, again, our marketplace is um, really quite new still, um, but these two companies, uh, startups, if you will, 
um, as are we a little further down the road, but they speak to our journal pillars specifically as both are startups and um, in a growth industry, we're willing to partner with like-minded pioneers and uh, accept degrees of risk. Um, that I believe is exactly what our editorial board did <laughs> in joining the journal at the, uh, at the outset. And we do in fact like to walk our talk and we actively seek partners to place um, us on the cutting edge of academic publishing. And we are in fact working on an article for a medical writers group about just that, how technology is changing medical writing in journals. Um, and so this is something that is evolving as we speak and continues to, and, and we are glad to be a part of it and um, hope to accelerate it. Um, Richard, the next slide now, I think that speaks to audience. Audience, yep. Yes, okay. here we go. Um, so a very wide audience, um, researchers, innovators, leadership at hospitals, payer organizations, informatics, biopharma, public health, uh, government, CROs, consultants, financial advisors, um, students, so really anyone with an interest in the, in the latest knowledge on blockchain technology and implementation to advance um, the horizon in, uh, in healthcare specifically. Our essence, we focus on uh, healthcare specifically. Our entire portfolio does. And so this is our focus and the audience is reflective of that. Hey, hey Tori, can I, can I interject a question here? Yeah, absolutely. So are you seeing trends or patterns as it relates to your audience? Are you seeing mixes or changes in mixes of your audience as you've sort of gone forward here? Um, no, I don't think so. Um, I think certainly startups are a, a big part of this and I'll speak to that in a, in a slide, um, uh, in two slides as a matter of fact. Um, you know, we're looking at the research side, the enterprise side, and the uh, innovation, uh, innovator slash startup side. So those are three primary buckets for us. Oh, outstanding. Very interesting. Thank uh, you. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, it, it touches um, everyone, just about everyone in, uh, in those categories. And students typically fall... Um, from all the conversations I've had on the, on the innovator side. Um, so it really is very, very interesting uh, and, and spans the, the globe as well. Um, but again, in those three buckets. Good, thank you. Mm -hmm. No, more than happy. Thanks for the question. So the next slide is our, um, and you asked about this actually, Richard, our chapters. Um, so the journal continues to experience international growth and we're connecting and building um, education and innovation hubs around the world just as you are um, and this is a, another point of intersection for us. Um, but the mission is to accelerate the pragmatic innovation um, in blockchain and converging technologies in healthcare around the world. And we've launched now uh, these chapters. We have announced these chapters, Australia, Italy, India, Norway, and Colorado, USA, who I believe is on the line, Erica Bierbauer in Colorado, USA. Welcome, Erica. Yes, um, thank you, Tori. I'm no, absolutely. She is so excited and so passionate, and this is what I love, absolutely adore about the journal. Um, so, uh, you know, from editorial board to ambassadors to readers to um, just just about any anyone and everyone. I mean, they are totally, entirely committed to this and to growing it and expanding it and and the education. Um, of it across the globe, and this is just the marvelous wonder of it all. Um, there are seven other uh, chapters that are uh, that are in that have been approved, and all we need to do is find the time to announce them all. So um, stay tuned for seven more, 
And, uh, you know, we get queries in on a daily basis. If you're interested in detail specifically about the Journal's Ambassador Program, there is a tab on the Journal homepage, and I believe it reads Ambassador Program, but just click on that and you'll get all the details. There is an application to fill out, and, uh, and we'll take it from, uh, from there. We do also ask you to submit a CV, and uh, that uh, gives you all the details with regard to the Ambassador Program. Um, there are two special issues that we have planned. One we have in fact announced, and it's the uh, Blockchain and Healthcare Today India special uh, issue. Um, and uh, the next actually is the wearables special issue, and we have two editorial board members working on that. It has not been announced yet, but they are in fact working on it. And um, you will see that announcement soon. And there is uh, still another issue that one editorial board member is very, very interested in. And um, we are looking for some uh, guest editors to join him. And you will hear more about that. Um, Richard, do you have any more questions about this specifically? Because you, you, you. Uh, did have the question earlier on, and I'm hoping I answered it with this slide. Yeah, and I and I think uh, just uh, as our membership is international, uh, if there's uh, you know if there's a way for them to contact you if they have an interest, uh, we may, may we may want to find a way to make that happen just just by virtue of the fact that if you know uh, if they don't catch this per particular presentation and they're still mm -hmm. interested. Uh, how best should they contact you? Just go to the website and contact you via the website or? Yeah, they can, they can contact me direct and I can point them to the website. All the details are on the website and the link to the application is also on the website in, uh, on that ambassador tab on the homepage, on the Blockchain and Healthcare Today homepage. Excellent, and of course they can contact you through LinkedIn or some some other uh, yeah, social media. Yeah, absolutely. Perfect. I'm I'm absolutely reachable. Call me, email me, what have you. Um, you know, shoot me a message on LinkedIn if we're not already connected. You know, send a send an invitation. Happy to connect with uh, with everyone. Um, again, the 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 journal, the entire portfolio. We're entirely committed to this. Um, everyone is welcome to the table. Everyone brings um, a different aspect and um, facet of expertise to the table, and um, the parts make the whole. Um, and so, absolutely, positively committed to that. Just you know, reach on out, and and we'll get back to you. Perfect. Thank quickly. you. Quickly. Quickly. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> no time to waste. Um, all righty, so uh, that's it for our chapters. Next is journal pillars. So we have, and you likely haven't seen this, um, because we, uh, when we first launched and before we launched the journal actually, um, we were uh, uh, sharing and reaching out to the ecosystem, sharing these four journal pillars which we adhere to. Um, uh, and this includes blockchain and healthcare today, but again, speaks to the entire portfolio. And the first journal pillar is that um, we will honor and build trust through truth, again, our tagline. Um, but we, um, we acknowledge that there are two paths to this truth. And one um, which is speaks to the audience and those three buckets. Um, one is primarily the innovator or innovation, and two is primarily the researcher and or research, if you will. So on the innovation side, certainly, you know, much more quicker and nimble and able to pivot faster and, um, you know, makes perhaps um, some errors along the way, but, you know, finds a way to fix them and, um, you know, responds quickly to um, markets. 
Um, but the research side now validates the innovation side, and they, and they both wind up coexisting and complementing one another. And so we are, are dedicated to, again, honoring and building trust through truth, um, particularly on the innovation and research side. Um, the second is a fearless commitment to the objective portrayal of fact. And we hold failure and transparency in esteem. And this is something that um, really doesn't get discussed all that much. Um, everyone agrees and says, uh, you know, oh, yes, absolutely, that's important. Um, failure takes an awful lot of courage. And it also deserves a great deal of admiration and acclaim. And um, that is why we hold it in, in such esteem. Um, the journal, uh, as does the portfolio, and uh, this I can speak for the editor-in-chief and, and editorial board. We all feel very, very strongly about this. We would like to see more and invite more um, manuscript submissions about failure. And, um, you know, typically, particularly on the research side, uh, no one really likes to admit uh, a failure, but um, that's really how we learn um, and learn quickly. Uh, and if we are able to add that to the body of work, um, you know, uh, another group or company or researcher or organization, institution, what have you, um, can take that and um, and and put it into uh, their practical application now. And so you're saving time, you're saving money, you're saving effort, and hopefully um, turning things around a, a little quicker in the in the marketplace and and for research purposes, and hopefully helping. You know, the end game here is uh, the patient and outcomes and, um, you know, finding solutions and discoveries. Um, and that really is what we would like to accelerate. And failures contribute to that, not in a small way, but in a very, very big way. Um, and so I, I just want to leave you with, with that thought. The third pillar now is um, allowing new or groundbreaking initiatives to germinate with fair balance. Um, so many startups out there and um, so many new concepts, if you will, and experimentation and ideations. And um, we ourselves were and are still in some respects a, uh, a startup. So um, we are very, very... Uh, in tune with this uh, pillar, if you will. Um, certainly, you know, back to the students and the innovators and those market makers and um, uh, those driving the marketplace and, and pioneers. And um, that is part of the essence of our launching the journal and um, saluting all those people and efforts, if you will. And finally, um, we just want to excite the audience and respond to its needs. So we are looking at uh, being very diligent in bringing new departments or facets or um, experimental new initiatives to the journal. Um, so if you have an idea or if you're a startup and are looking for um, a partner or uh, feedback or, or what have you, we are very, very open to that indeed and want to be very responsive to our marketplace and audience and, and readers um, on the global uh, stage, if you will. Um, so these are our journal pillars. Um, and if you have any questions, again, happy to, uh, most happy to answer. The next slide speaks to tenets. And these are our journal tenets against, uh, again, um, introduced prior to launching the journal. But the first is um, collaboration that propels paradigm shifts in uh, healthcare and legacy systems. 
Um, the second is building trust uh, in the global community through uh, thought leadership and uh, corporate responsibility, and I think that speaks to ethics. Um, the third is a quest for truth and innovation, um, certainly compassion, and um, accelerating better health, lower costs, um, and security for patients worldwide. Uh, the fourth ongoing research, innovation, and open sharing of research and knowledge, uh, both positive and negative. And this is both on the research side in terms of the um, uh, submissions and articles published, but also uh, the journal's adherence to publication ethics, uh, data sharing, and reproducibility. And finally, adherence to industry guidelines and standards and practices, current and future. Um, on the academic journal side, we have many um, and adhere to those. But uh, I think we will likely be seeing more in the future on the uh, policy side in terms of guidelines and standards. And, um, and we will follow suit. So these are our tenets. So, so Tori, can I can I ask a question on that last point? Yeah, 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 absolutely. So, where are you seeing change in policy? Uh, is are you again? I'm looking for patterns or trends uh, that you may be seeing from your your point of view. Well, what uh, <laughs> well, I think what we're experiencing now is a whole lot of conversation um, and a whole lot of pressure. Um, and a lot of um, very well-meaning and intentioned um, initiatives insofar as hard policy and guidelines and standards, nothing. Um, and that's where we need to get. Yeah, and I ask in part because uh, really part of our uh, sensitivity uh, going forward for a lot of membership uh, revolves around the issue of governance. And Absolutely. I wonder, I wonder if that's uh, something that you're starting to get a sense for, or is there a certain level of maturity that you see yet, or is it just too soon? No, there's a level of awareness uh, that I see. There is a, um, I, I think we've reached the tipping point insofar as a, um, not just a need for, but a requirement of. And that is where the industry is now, and that's what's holding up the industry. Um, and I, I believe, um, and this is again in uh, taking temperature, if you will, um, uh, and feedback from the marketplace, and we will be addressing this um, candidly and very pointedly at the uh, at the conference. Um, the, this policy and regulation, um, really needs, um, to be stepped up, if you will. Um, and I think our regulators are being pressured into, um, you know, the need for sooner rather than later. Um, and they are trying what they're what they need to do is get up to speed, and I think um, enterprise and academia is doing their best at getting them up to speed as quickly as possible, but they do need to make some hard decisions, and uh, it, it cannot be in the interest of special interest, um, but they really need to put the, uh, the interest of the citizen first and to to maintain an objective uh, profile it's it's hard it's it's not easy um, it, they need to be very very prudent um, and and do what's right and um, as as a lawmaker and policymaker, and you know, in between election cycles and and what have you, um, it is not the easiest thing to do. Um, so this is where I believe the the industry, um, ours anyway, in healthcare is right now. 
Um, we've seen a bit of a stall. Um, and this is what the industry is looking for. What they're looking for is, of course, um, uh, a comfort zone and a net um, that they can all fall in, but cost is an issue. Um, and uh, again, we'll be we'll be addressing this at the at the conference. Um, this is this is my perspective and and read of the marketplace at present. Interesting. Thank you. Uh, and I just mindful of time, maybe five or ten minutes. Um, no worries. Um, so next slide in that case. Um, so BHTY is part of a portfolio, and the portfolio includes telehealth and medicine today, a complementary um, uh, conference, an annual conference, and uh, innovation competition. Uh, the conference is Converge to Accelerate, CONV2X uh, for short, and we've identified both telehealth and blockchain as the two sectors um, uh, changing the future of healthcare. Um, and this includes business models, delivery, and cost. And I made that real short and we can uh, go to the next slide. Okay. So this is the conference, Converge to Accelerate, Conv2x, uh, October 15, in Boston, Massachusetts. We are collaborating, co-locating, and co-promoting with HIMSS uh, Connected Care event. And our theme this year is proving market value with pragmatic innovation in healthcare. Each year we choose a, a theme that we think reflects the needs of the marketplace. And this year, um, we believe that, uh, the, uh, that, the, that the theme or what the market is looking for is um, show us market value, prove market value. So we're looking at um, not only case use, but we're looking at scaled use in the marketplace, and we're also looking at the value of those uh, cases insofar as, okay, how much did it cost and how much is it going to save or how much is it saving? Um, and I think that's what the marketplace is looking for right now. And um, that uh, coupled with policy and regulation and standards um, is going to kick us to the next plateau. Um, and with that, we can go to the next slide. All righty. So uh, primary features, what we can expect now um, from this conference, Proving Market Value, is an intensive one-day program where evidence-based, real-world market impact of blockchain and, health, uh, and telehealth is demonstrated. We're looking at grounding this in reality and pragmatism through use cases um, across multiple market segments around the world. We have the United States certainly present. Canada is coming. Israel is coming. India is coming. Estonia is coming. The United Kingdom is coming and Dubai is coming. And some of those countries um, we well know are further along than we are here. So what they show us and tell us will be very, very valuable indeed. Um, we're looking at leveling the playing field. So um, not so much, uh, you know, imaginating or, uh, or ideating or, um, you know, with what if scenarios, but we want to level the playing field in terms of misconceptions and divergent understandings across the ecosystem. And this includes internally within organizations um, because the understanding is so different um, among players within organizations. Really what we need to do is, is put everyone on, um, on the same track if you will, with understanding. And lastly, uh, presenting and debating with paths forward and guidance for replication um, where possible uh, by market makers and, and early adopters sharing their real world experience. 
So the next slide now. So this is more or less a recap for you um, for the conference and just about everything that's included. And just last week, we announced um, an exclusive network media distribution with um, Trader News Network. And we're bringing ABC, NBC, CBS, and Fox affiliates, amplifying thought leadership um, around the world to anywhere between 14 and 40 million viewers. Um, McKinsey is a keynote. In the morning, there are debates, and one of these debates speaks to what we were just talking about, uh, Richard, and what you asked, where does blockchain fit in healthcare? Um, and a e-blast went out, I think, just uh, yesterday asking some very, very pointed questions. And these are questions that we're hearing uh, in the marketplace now, and we are addressing those questions and, and some of that skepticism in this debate. And the other debate is, and this is on fire, patient privacy and data rights. And we've heard an awful lot in um, just the uh, media, generally speaking, about you know, Google this and Amazon that and, and Microsoft this and, uh, you know, iPad and um, Facebook and you name it. And so um, this is going to be a very, very interesting debate indeed. Um, Evidence-based solutions uh, presenting scaled and uh, case use using the Harvard Business School case method. Uh, we have our innovation ignition competition unsurpassed networking, all market makers, um, pragmatics, and, and pioneers. It's just a uh, phenomenal lineup. Um, we're collaborating again with the HIMSS Connected Care Conference. There is an Editor's uh, Choice Award that we are presenting for both Blockchain and Healthcare Today and Telehealth and Medicine Today. And we have two featured charities at the uh, conference. One is the Boston Debate League, and the head of that organization is actually moderating the patient uh, privacy and data rights uh, debate. And the other charity is um, an Israeli group um, speaking on the telehealth track, United Hatzla. And um, they have an incredible global organization that's a volunteer, and you'll be hearing more about that. But what they do is save lives and uh, respond to emergencies in under three minutes. And 100% of the proceeds are donated to the charities, and you can make those donations when you check out and register for the conference. How much is entirely up to you, but 100% of what you contribute um, is split 50-50 uh, between each charity. And the other thing that is not on the list is an exclusive contract we are announcing next week, so you guys are the first ones to hear about this. Um, we are partnering with Zoom for worldwide live um, audience engagement pre-conference, during the conference, and post-conference. And you will be learning more about that next week. And so this is our synopsis of Convy 2 x October 15 in Boston. The next slide, Richard. Sure. So these are our partners and endorsing organizations, um, HIMS being one, and the HIMS Blockchain Task Force. Um, and we, uh, Blockchain and Healthcare Today, have partnered to uh, further the education and understanding of blockchain around the globe, and we'll, collab uh, we'll be collaborating and, um, uh, uh, for both editorial and live events in future. Um, the first collaboration is our conference now in October. The ATA has endorsed both the Blockchain Journal and the Telehealth and Medicine Journal, the American Telemedicine Association. I believe it's got about 11,000 members. The IEEE, we are uh, working with um, in tandem 
there is a one-hour workshop uh, that we are presenting at the conference on harmonizing technology for remote clinical trials. And um, that is a new work group that uh, IEEESA is launching. I am the co-chair. And you will be hearing more about that in the next couple of weeks. A press release is going out and the website is going live. So stay tuned. And we can go to the next slide now. Uh, this is just a, a general synopsis of the conference. If you'd like to read um, more about it, you are welcome to hear. Um, and again, the annual theme reflects current trends and issues uh, that we find need to be addressed in the marketplace. And the next slide, Richard. Okay. I think we are going to make our timeline. Um, it is hosted by the two peer review journals, Blockchain and Healthcare Today and Telehealth and Medicine Today. Uh, the um, uh, the URL that you see here is um, the URL for the conference site. All the details, speakers, agenda, everything can be found there. Uh, if you just Google ConV2X 2019, um, you will also find it that way. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, next slide. Almost done. This slide is a synopsis for the blockchain journal specifically. Um, there is a uh, badge in the upper right corner that you see there, our BHTY first, pragmatic, trusted, timely. Do consider us uh, when you have a, um, uh, an opinion piece or submission uh, for the journal as your um, go-to source, if you will. Um, there are a couple of bullets that are uh, that have an asterisk, um, and we just like to highlight that these are areas in which we can partner, and we would like your engagement, and you can certainly join. One is the editorial board, the other is the uh, becoming an ambassador and chapter, and the last is certainly joining us at Conv2x in Boston. October um, 20, October 15. And um, just a note, in 2020, we will be um, opening and introducing advertising in the journal. If anyone is interested, do contact me. But we, um, we will be maintaining absolute integrity, uh, even with the advertising. The advertising will be limited. So we are taking a conservative approach, but there are some enhancements that we'd like to make to the journal. And I think we'll, um, we'll again, excite uh, the audience. So we're looking forward to that. And the very, very last slide now is contact info. If anyone would like to contact um, me, several emails there, my direct, phone line uh, is the cell number and um, there are two other uh, there is one video actually that I'm trying to get over to Richard and failed miserably yesterday <laughs> so I'm going to try again today so you can post that um, uh, and there is also a and I need to send this to you Richard um, we are also going to offer HC SIGs a discount for the conference. Oh, that'd be great. Um, and Thank you. We have not done this for other groups. We are doing it for you. Um, I think the, uh, the, the value is certainly there. Our um, objectives and, and missions um, are most definitely aligned, and we are looking forward to um, moving, I think, this relationship uh, and building it in uh, the future. And so, Richard, I will forward this to you and you can share it with, uh, with membership. Excellent. So, thank you. Thank, thank you, you very much. Very, very much. And thanks very much uh, for the presentation, uh, Tori. And we just have a minute or so left. Uh, any, any quick questions or comments uh, for Tori? 
great presentation. Thanks for sharing. Thank you very, very much. Appreciate it. Um, again, if, if you have any uh, questions or um, suggestions, most definitely, um, shoot them on over. Uh, you know, uh, again, all are, are welcome. Um, and and let's, let's do it. Outstanding. All righty. Uh, well, with that said, uh, we are at the top of the hour. Uh, thanks again, Tori, for your presentation. Very much appreciate that. Uh, and yeah, I'll, I'll certainly, uh, we'll find a way to get the video out to membership as well as the, uh, the extra code. Uh, that'll be fantastic as well. So thank you. And uh, for everyone else, thanks very much for being on the call today. And we will see you in two weeks. Thank you so much. Very much appreciate it. Thanks so much. Enjoy your day. Have a great weekend, everybody. And you. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Thank you, guys.